Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing another one of the simulation comparisons and this time it is going to be the player's shot power versus shot accuracy. So the only difference for the entire player in the two sets of 10 years is going to be these four stats right here between slap shot power and accuracy and wrist shot power and accuracy. So one of them is going to have 99 power with 36 accuracy and the other's going to have 99 accuracy with 36 power but all the abilities the size of the player everything else stays the same so you guys seem to like the video and yeah it was kind of interesting so i'm definitely down to do more of these comparisons and i think this one's pretty cool as well so uh, before we actually get into it here i'm curious what do you guys think just off the top of your head if you had to guess do you think it's more important to be able to absolutely rip the puck even though you might not hit the net a lot of the time or do you think it's more important to be able to place the puck, even though it's going to be pathetically weak? I just want you guys to ponder on that and think before we actually get into it here, because, I don't know, um, maybe you'll be right with the result, maybe you won't. But I will say this, that there definitely was a difference this time. So, we're starting off here with the player that has 99 power and very little accuracy 20 points in 24 playoff games but not scoring a whole lot of goals the golden knights are going to take home the stanley cup in year number one and the panthers would have a very successful playoff run making it all the way to the finals where they would lose to the golden knights in six games year number two they finished 10th in the league tino mans puts up 10 goals and 47 assists for a total of 57 points only five points in seven playoff games this year and the Tampa Bay Lightning will go on to win the Stanley Cup. A Calder Trophy there for Tino Mant. So it's pretty wild actually to see already that just adjusting two stats, first of all, not only drops a player to 91 overall, but on top of that, prevents them from scoring the insane amount of points that we have seen them score when doing 99 overall player sims. So eight points this year in the playoffs. Another Stanley Cup for the Tampa Bay Lightning in year number three, and the Florida Panthers would make it to round number two, but the Jerks would beat them in six games. Also, I kind of wanted to bring up, is that shot pass tendency attribute new? Because I don't remember seeing that, but maybe it's been there and I've just overlooked it the whole time as I was putting up all the stats. However, I do feel like I would have noticed that, so I think it's new. But if you guys could let me know, that would be pretty neat. So yeah, thank you for that. And on top of that, great year from the Panthers, losing the final seven games to the Canucks, and then they go ahead and place 27th the next year. And just for anyone that doesn't really know, I tried to eliminate as many external factors as I could. So I do the first year over and over and over again, so that it's the exact same year of NHL that's happening in these simulations. So for all 20 seasons, it is just the first year that I'm simulating. So that the lines don't change, contracts don't change, etc. And on top of that, I turned off computer trades. And there's a few other things that I can't think of off the top of my head right now. But yeah, I try to make it as static as possible, as I mentioned in the last video, just to make sure that the simulation is not affected. The Florida Panthers would miss the playoffs two years in a row, but they were back in it this year, finishing 10th in the league. We see 16 goals from Tino. And 10 playoff games with only 2 points, a dash for this year. 3.7 shooting percentage, rough go. The Winnipeg Jets are Stanley Cup champions this time around. And Florida would be bested by the Washington Capitals in round number 2. This year they finished 5th in the league and they had 102 points. Mans put up 52 and had an 8.2 shooting percentage. 24 playoff games and 12 points in those games and they would go on to win their first Stanley Cup of this half of the simulation so as you can see here they went to seven games twice once in round number one and once in the finals but they did end up winning it and then the very next year they finished 19th it's crazy the variance of these simulations blows my mind 50 assists and nine goals this year the stanley cup goes to the jets again and the flow rider panthers would miss out on the playoffs but for year number 10 the final year of the power simulation they finished fourth in the league. Mans puts up only six goals and has a 3.1 shooting percentage. In the playoffs, he played 15 games, put up six points, and had a 7.7 .7 shooting percentage. The Golden Knights are Stanley Cup champions 
for the final year of the power simulation and the Panthers would make it to the conference finals but be swept by the Islanders. And now it is time to move on to the accurate player. So one thing to notice right off the bat is that when power is all the way down but accuracy is up, the player is not 91 overall. They are in fact 93 overall. So I'm kind of just going through here to show you guys that the shot pass bias is the same and that the details of the player are the same. And then I also show you that the abilities have not been adjusted. The only stat that I touched was the accuracy and power of both types of shots. And I'm showing you here again that I try to eliminate as many factors from changing the simulation as possible. Obviously, we have a bit of a chemistry difference here, but the lines are the same. Someone pointed out to me that that is likely the result of the head coach. And yes, you're most likely right. I forgot about that. So the coach would most definitely be causing these chemistry issues. Still plus five for Uyghur and Ekblad, though. That is insane. And then Bobrovsky and Knight in net for the Panthers. In year number one, they finish eighth with 47 wins and 101 points. Mance puts up 35 goals already this year and has a 12.6 shooting percentage. So I think you already know where this is going. They played 25 games in the playoffs and he had 11 goals and 25 points total. The Golden Knights would win the Stanley Cup, however, and because of course, I don't know how else he wouldn't get it with, well, you know what, I guess 35 goals is good, but it's nothing crazy, but he won the Calder anyway. They lost to the Golden Knights in the finals, taking seven games. The next year, the Panthers finish 10th again. Mans will put up 38 goals this time and has a 14.3 shooting percentage. Only a 5.1 shooting percentage in the playoffs, however. Chicago wins the Stanley Cup for year number two, and the Panthers would be deleted in round number two by the Toronto Maple Leafs, which that's, come on, they're never going to make it there, let's be real. They win the President's Trophy in year three with 110 points. Mans will only put up 27 goals this year, which is still good, but a little bit slow for him. 8.4 shooting percentage and a 14.3 shooting percentage in the playoffs. Pretty solid. The Carolina Hurricanes win the Stanley Cup for year number three, and the Flow Rider Panthers are eliminated by the Broad Street Bullies in round number one, taking five games. This year, they finish seventh in the league with 100 points, 37 goals from Tino, and a 12.0 shooting percentage, a 5.0 shooting percentage in the playoffs, and Carolina would go on to win a Stanley Cup yet again. And as you can see, Tino doing a pretty good job at winning Calders. The team is eliminated by the Lightning in six games, round number two, and another successful year for them, finishing third in the league. We are already halfway through. 31 goals from Tino this year, 59 points. So something interesting to notice is that the point totals are not really substantially higher, but holy crap, it's goals and assists. That whole scale is crazy different. I don't know how that really changes with the pass shot <laughs> tendency but it's pretty interesting to see here anyway 46 goals this year 76 points that's a big step up from the power shot player simulation the rangers are going to win the stanley cup this year another calder for tino and another elimination at the hands of the tampa bay lightning in round number two year seven they finished 10th in the league they seem to really like that spot this time around Mans puts up 27 goals and 50 points, 19 playoff games with 16 points and a 14.5 shooting percentage. The Golden Knights win themselves a Stanley Cup. They seem to win quite a bit. It's pretty crazy, actually. And the Florida Panthers would face them in the finals, but they get swept. So GG no re. Second in the league is where the Florida Panthers would find themselves this year with 50 wins, 35 goals from Tino, and 52 points overall, 21 playoff games, with 14 points, the Edmonton Oilers would win the cup, however, and the Florida Panthers did, in fact, make it to the finals yet again, where they got swept yet again. Very interesting. Speaking of very interesting, how about another 10th place finish for the Flow Ride of Panthers? Yeah, it's pretty interesting if you ask me. 27 goals from Tino this year, 13 playoff games ooh, with 12 points. Boston Bruins are going to take home the Stanley Cup. The Calder would go to Newhook. It, in fact, did not go to Tino this year. The Panthers were deleted by the eventual Stanley Cup winning Bruins in round number two. This year, they finished second in the league. Tino Mann, second on the team for points with 34 goals as well. 
And we got 10 playoff games, 9 points, 14.3 shooting percentage. And the New Jersey Devils win the Stanley Cup. I think that's the first time they've won it. So good for them. And they (laughs) swept Chicago in the finals. But a second round exit for the Panthers, taking 6 games to the Leafs. So here's the stats. Some pretty interesting stuff. The power player definitely put up more assists. Like by a long shot. But the accuracy player definitely put up more goals. And he also had... A lot more shots. So I find that kind of interesting with that shot pass tendency as well. Because they had the same shot pass tendency. But one guy knew how to rip a puck. And the other guy knew how to place it. And the guy that knew how to place it took a lot more shots. But overall, only about a 50 point difference between the two players. And yeah. uh, Game winning goals was obviously massively different. Because one player scored a lot more goals. Whereas the other player got a lot more assists. And then shooting percentage, obviously is going to be heavily in favor of the accurate player having 11.33 in the season and 11.7 in the playoffs, whereas the power player had 6.79 in the season and 3.44 in the playoffs. Well, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any other ideas for stats or anything else you want me to try and compare, I do want to do the size of the goalie as well. I think that's a very cool one because that actually might make a difference. I know it doesn't for the player, but for the goalie, I think it definitely could. So yeah, we'll have to check that out. And if you have any other ideas, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. If you could like the video, that would be great as well. And I'll see you guys soon.